wanted to touch on two recent publications from our group. The first one was looking at the impact of diet, specifically the standard high carbohydrate, low fat diet versus a very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. We controlled multiple variables ultimately to elucidate diet specific impact on the athletes across performance, fuel oxidation, and middle age athlete health. Now, in this publication, we demonstrate that athletes were able to maintain very high intense exercise performance, upwards of 85% of their VO2 max on this very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. Now, in order to maintain that performance, these athletes were able to shift their fuel substrate oxidation, specifically their fat oxidation rates. These changes in fuel substrate oxidation during exercise on a very low carbohydrate diet forced us to reevaluate some core concepts held by the exercise crossover concept. For those who aren't familiar, the crossover concept has some key assumptions. The first assumption is that as exercise intensity increases as measured by maximal oxygen uptake, or also known as VO2 max, that carbohydrate oxidation will increase and that fat oxidation will decrease as shown in the graph. Now this assumes that fat oxidation would be near zero, greater than 85% of VO2 max. However, in our publication, as well as other publications north of 70% of VO2 max, fat oxidation was not zero. In fact, it was at record levels. Our findings, as well as findings from multiple other research groups showing record levels of fat oxidation, even at very high intensity exercise, forces us to reevaluate this course concept of the crossover effect. Another core concept of the crossover concept in exercise science is that carbohydrate oxidation would be at or near zero at rest or in low intensity exercise. Now, at rest, it has been shown all the way back to 2000 that 37% of fuel substrate oxidation can actually come from carbohydrate oxidation. Prins et al. in 2023 also showed using a steady state graded exercise test looking at low exercise intensity as low as 10% all the way to very 100% of someone's VO2 max. And what they showed was that at the lower exercise intensity range, carbohydrate oxidation actually accounted for 50 to 70% of the fuel utilized at these very low intensity exercise. Thus, this assumption from the crossover concept that carbohydrate oxidation would be near zero at rest or even at low intensity exercise also requires reevaluation. There was another unexpected finding from our study, specifically in athletic health. Now, the cardiometabolic response to the low carbohydrate, high fat ketogenic diet was very much in line with what we would expect based on the prior exercise and diet literature. However, when we were evaluating the continuous glycemic values of middle-aged athletes on a high carbohydrate, low fat diet, we actually found that 30% of these athletes had glucose values consistent with prediabetes, greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. This was both in the 24 hour and fasted windows. Now, we don't know if this is subclinical pathology or just a unique phenotype observed in athletes. However, we know that elevated fasted and 24-hour glucose levels are not associated with positive outcomes. There's actually well-established literature showing dose-dependent elevations and risk for other diseases as you get higher and higher in glucose values. Now, specifically in our study, we showed that the diet, specifically a low-carbohydrate, high-fat ketogenic diet, resolved these elevated glucose levels. Our findings that diet, specifically carbohydrate-restricted ketogenic diet, resolved or improved these glycemic values is also consistent with literature in prediabetes using a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. This is consistent with Maffetone and Larson's publication in Sports Medicine describing the fit but unhealthy athlete. However, aren't athletes historically protected, especially normal body weight and fit athletes? Well, yes, exercise is obviously protective across multiple health metrics. Others have raised different hypotheses as to why athletes may have elevated levels of glucose. We are actively investigating this area of research and we hope to receive feedback to help us explore how to optimize not just performance, but health, not just in athletes, but also in the general population.